So, hi everyone, it's me, Denny, and I'm here with... Donna. Bob. Andrew. And they came all the way from uh, Maryland. Rockville, Maryland. Rockville, Maryland, to see the Museum of Interesting Things. And I have now three boxes that they're going to open, one of which I broke, <laughs> over here. And I do this, I'm going to mix them up like a 40-second street shell game. So here I go, mixing them up. That's me mixing them around. There we go. Are you guys confused? Oh, God. That's me mixing exactly. it around. This is the world's worst mixing. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Are you guys confused? We are. Excellent, Fair good, because otherwise I would have to do this all day. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess uh, we'll start with Mom, which is the box you want to open. Um, Ladies I first. That one. that one in the middle, excellent. And we'll give you your scalpel. Remember not to cut him or yourself. Or yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, I guess uh, we'll go down the line. Dad, you pick a box. Just go ahead and start. Right. Yeah, get, get start. But pick a box. Go ahead. Which one do you want to? I'll pick the one over there. That one over there? Yeah, okay. Sure. And then uh, you get this one. You pick this one. <laughs> and then here's your scalpel. And then uh, there's yours. Remember, do not cut yourself. If you do, I have Civil War surgical tools that I can cure you with. Oh, oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. You sure? They, they don't even require sterilization and silly stuff like that. A shot of whiskey and you're fine. <laughs> uh, so pull that out and I'll take the box away. Is this more uh, stuff for your museum? museum scissors? Yep. I get things every day. Oh, okay. So... Oh, looks like you found a film. Must be film day. Except for him, that's clearly not a film. You definitely need more scissor action. <laughs> but you want to cut it like a box cutter. So I'll start with mom. Let's see what you got here. Uh, new line store. But well, we don't even know if that's the actual. Oh, actually, I think this is. Oh, the do line. Oh, is that? Wow. I've been waiting story. for this. Do you know the do line at all? I don't. The dew line, this is the dew line. For those of you out there that know this, it's an absolutely amazing uh, story. Apparently, during the Cold War, we were expecting the Russians to bomb us. Everyone was worried. You remember the cold, the Red Scare? Yeah. So they had the dew line, which is a bunch of people up in like the middle of nowhere Arctic who just sat there every single day for years waiting for Russia to send rockets, which they obviously never did because we're all here. So they had nothing to do. But anyway, this is a documentary by Western Electric on um, those people, and I've met one of them, uh, and I have his photography. They were so bored. The guy had a dark room, and he would take pictures of the actual dew line. So we have original photography from one of the dew line people, oh, the scientist's cool. son. So that I've been waiting for this for years. This is a really rare movie, oh, and Western Electric. Yeah, so that's a really great one. When we show, we do a doomsday show at the Speakeasy every April. Because, you know, Easter and Passover is perfect for a doomsday you know, theme. So we do a doomsday theme every April. It started by accident. It just happened to be that our, our event hit, like, Passover, Easter, Hitler's birthday, and apparently National Pot Day. It was April 21, as it was, like, the first time we did it. It was, like, all these things at once. And my staff mentioned it to me. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Then the theme should be doomsday. Because what better theme than Doomsday for all those holidays, all those things. So, yeah. Let's see what you must open. It must be film day. It is Got film day, more. obviously. Let me get this out of your lap and find out. What, which, what did you open? One says Elizabeth on the front. Oh, interesting. I don't know what it appears to be. Oh these, are, oh, these are Russian films. These are old Russian cartoons. Um, and some of it's part of, part of a little bit of the Doomsday show also. The idea is showing how, you know, in the Cold War, they had their propaganda and their stuff, and then we have ours. Huh. So I picked up a whole bunch of Russian films, and we have Russian fallout shelter signs and all those kind of things. <laughs> and we even have a Russian Rubik's Cube. Mm -hmm. And one is square, and one is a triangle, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. So that's cool. When we do the Doomsday Show, you guys will be the ones that supplied all the films okay. for, that, for the battle. And then what did you open up here? And I have a feeling... Oh, my Lord, careful. Let me do it with you. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Some kind of camera? Way better than that. 
You opened up a holy grail item. Uh-oh. This is an original cipher machine. Oh, from yeah. World War II. Yeah. I was sure you yeah, were going like to think this. That, uh, that movie with... Um, Imitation game. Yeah, yeah. So if you... Do you know the, the TV show Pawn Stars? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on Pawn Stars with one of these machines. Hmm. That machine right here. This is the machine that was on Pawn Stars. So I don't know if people can see it on there. Oh, yeah, they can. So that was the machine. Obviously, I didn't sell it. Spoiler, sorry, because it's sitting here. Uh, but I... Yeah, I was on Pawn Stars, and this was my only machine at the time, and I wanted to pick up some other ones. So this is, uh, this so this is another one. one. This is a World War II cipher machine, kind of like uh, a baby version of the Enigma. Let's show the humans this one. I'm not sure if it's the... It's not the 209. It might be the 52 model. The Crypto AG was made by Haglin. This is the 52. Look at that. Uh, and this one I've been waiting almost a year to open. Like I, we, got, we picked this up a year ago and nobody's opened it. Uh, until now, so we're oh. the first to open this. And this is the nicest one. I've, this is a really cool looking one. And basically it's an encoding machine to encode your messages. Uh, the Enigma was the holy grail of them, and I have Enigma parts here somewhere too, actually. Since we did that TV show, I bought Enigma parts. Uh, but when we did that show, I had only one cipher machine, and that was it. Um, but yeah, basically it's encoding your letters. So if you type the letter A, it might put a letter B instead, or a letter C. Mm -hmm. And basically, you there's dials here, so you dial in a code. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, which is Mel Brooks's luggage combination, by the way, in <laughs> Spaceballs. Uh, but, but you dial one, two, three, four, five, six, and the guy on the other side would put in one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I pressed an A, you know the Germans would see a B, but our guys would see the A because they knew the correct code, the combination. So you'd have to synchronize the two machines with the same code. And with the Enigma, same kind of thing, and they would coordinate uh, and change it every day. So it would be a different, so that way it was harder to crack. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that is a very cool item to do. Yeah, so what do you, I always ask, do, what, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm retired, but I was an economist for the Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, really? Wow. And uh, I'm currently working as an analyst programmer in a, for a company called IMS. Ah, okay. Well, I'm retired too, but I was in congressional relations at the Food and Drug Administration. Oh, wow, interesting. Because it's always ironic. Some people open up items that have some sort of relation to them. So you worked for the government, mm -hmm. and this was done by the government. Mm -hmm. So this was a, ver a government <laughs> program. So that was the pra we've been noticing that 80% of people open up packages that have to do with them. We have to figure out the Russian side of your one. Uh, but 20% were not sure. And then with you being a programmer, Opening up a cipher machine is kind yeah. of perfect for a programmer yeah, like because you would be, yeah. And I've noticed that 80% of people open them up. I'll have to see what the theme is for those two Russian pieces because it might have to do with, you know, with your thing. It's just I don't remember the Elizabeth one well enough. Uh, and, I don't, and we didn't figure out the other one, what it is. So I'll have to go to the original auctions. Did you have some of these packages out. for a year or more and then you don't open them? Most of the time they get open pretty quick. But this one actually I put away and buried it over there for a while because I was one of my staff is a nuclear physicist who actually now runs a nuclear facility out west. Uh, and I was hoping I was Max was originally going to open this, and then I uh, I was like you know what I'm going to bring it out for you guys. And now I'm glad I did. And it's kind of a per and I knew you would love this. So I was like definitely this has to be open because this is right in your ballpark. So both of you are apparently are perfect. Well, we're going to say goodbye to you guys. Bye everyone. Bye.